Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the supplemental edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's episode number 63. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to our midweek episode. It's the podcast where Bob gets to uh, expound upon things that are in the knife world, uh, knife news, knife drops. Uh, We're going to hear some uh, knife life news coming up in our beginning segment, but we're also going to get into the evolution of the Knife Junkies knife collection, talk about uh, the New York Custom Knife Show, which was this past weekend. And as we know, Christmas and the holidays are coming up. By the way, Happy Thanksgiving, which is Mm -hmm. today or tomorrow, whenever you're listening. This show comes out on uh, Wednesday evening, so Thanksgiving tomorrow. But if you're listening to it Thursday as you're out and about enjoying your Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. But Christmas is also coming, so we're going to talk about uh, Christmas catalogs, which you don't see much of the printed catalogs nowadays, but... You know, Christmas is the peak shopping season, so we get to see a lot of catalogs, and Bob has a chance to uh, to talk about that. So, Bob, you know, happy Thanksgiving to you, by the way. Happy Thanksgiving to you, sir. Uh, I am I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. This is the one time of year now that I allow myself to be 100% gluttonous right. with food, anyway. Right. <laughs> and uh, I know I used to always, we would always go out of town to relatives, so we would just get stuffed sit in whatever chair was available, pretend to watch the football game with both <laughs> eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Wake up and go eat some more and just, you know, do it all day long. So, yeah, it's just a great time for food and family and, uh, and a couple of days off work, man. That's, oh, yeah. No, you know, I used, <laughs> to, like that. I used to tell my parents uh, if if we got presents on Thanksgiving, it would be my absolute favorite holiday because you would have everything. You'd have the gluttony of food and the gluttony of receiving material goods And it would be just the perfect holiday. But I think it's probably good to parse it out over the season. Pretty good. I'm sure there's a Thanksgiving knife story we could probably get into as well. But, hey, let's let's not go there. (laughs) (laughs) But speaking of stories, uh, we've got our opening segment, Knife Life News, which is coming up next. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, so Benchmade is at it again. They're releasing another bug out sprint. Uh, run here. Hmm. Uh, but this one has 20 CV steel and G10. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. And they're acting like it's the second coming of Christ. I have a, I, over and over, I'll, I'll come back to Benchmade with, with a love hate. You know, mm-hmm. I, I love the bug out. All right. It is, is one of my most carried knives. And, uh, you know, I, I have this, uh, I, I have, uh, the Benchmade AKCF. Uh, what a eight, whatever armed forces only AFO switchblade that I love, and uh, I just recently sold my Crooked River to fund another purchase. But Benchmade has some fantastic knives, you know. Uh, but they do this thing where they'll they'll release the knife in a in a steel that's you know great S30V is great, but it's a little bit behind the times, right? They must be sitting on a lifetime supply there. And uh, so they come out with this great knife, and then they'll do the sprint run versions of it and upgrade it to a modern, you know, contemporary steel like 20 CV and upgrade it to a modern sort of contemporary handle material like, well, G10. Mm. And then they act like it's like, oh, here, here you go. You want G10? And so this latest Lim- bug out, limited time, limited uh, supply. Yeah, Get it now. yeah, like this this new material they're using up in space. Okay, that being said, I, I, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of raz and bench made, but so they have this new bug out coming out uh, with the translucent G10 and the 20 CV steel, and uh, you know it's got the same titanium axis lock bar, and it's you know it raises the 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 weight from 1.85 ounces to 2.12 ounces, and that that was the whole sort of uh, USP of this knife is how light it is and how awesome. You know, it is for, for how late, but it's, uh, this new one with G10 and 20 CV steel is $230. Mm-hmm. And to me, I'm like, you know, it better have gold inlays and <laughs> some sort of exotic Damascus steel for that price. It is just a bug out right. in G10. But anyway, I'm sure it'll be sweet. You know me, I love translucent, uh, G10 and 20 CV steel is, is playing prominently in my collection right now. So, I mean, 
I think it'll be a fantastic knife. And all joking aside, uh, you know, I, I'm sure it's worth the money to some folks, but, uh, you know, why not buy a bug out with the, with the S30V steel, which is 100% adequate, if not just awesome. And then buy new scales, and you could do all of that for less than two hundred and thirty bucks. So anyway, man, mm. that's that's all I'm saying. Okay, well maybe uh, you know maybe uh, capitalizing on the uh, the holiday gift giving season, and uh, you know thinking that a lot of folks will put it on their list where they're they're not buying it, but uh, getting it as a gift. Uh, you know who knows? Benchmade, you don't have to do that. But anyway, Steel Will, another uh, company I like to razz a little bit because I'm kind of getting tired of their D2 and. And uh, GRN handled or G10 handled, whatever's. Uh, they have a new knife out that is actually really cool and unique. It's not just in the market, but for them as well. And it's uh, it's the new Cobalt. It's a it's a it has a inch and a quarter long blade, so it's California legal and it's legal in a lot of places that have size restrictions. And it's just a cool little tiny. Um, but very ergonomic seeming um, uh, EDC blade, and it's got uh, it's on it's on ball bearings. It's got uh, D2 steel and uh, G10 handles, and they have four versions, all colored. They have one murdered out, totally black version, and then they have um, what is it? Uh, I think they have well, they have blue with a red anodized backspacer. They have orange with a blue anodized backspacer. Something else, can't remember what it is. And the black. So it's this great little, and it's also in their, in their budget line. So it's affordable. It's this great little, uh, EDC. I, I'm thinking of picking this one up, actually. Mm -hmm. It looks like a three finger knife at most, but it looks like it's set up as a two finger knife. It's got a, a finger choil and then another little swale for, for your fingers. And then, and then you're on your own. So, uh, I think with a lanyard, this thing would be uh, a fantastic drop in the pocket or, mm -hmm. or fifth pocket knife. And I got to say, you know, it's easy to turn knives into the most important thing in the world and then get all preachy about Steel Will's uh, recent releases. It's kind of silly, of course. But all that aside, I think this is a pretty cool knife, the Cobalt. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the picture on the uh, the story that we'll have the link to, and they've got the uh, the orange one pictured. Mm -hmm. And kind of kind of nice looking, I think. Yeah, and you've got that flipper. Uh, mm -hmm. and it comes out, you know, rockets out on the, on the ball bearings, but you also have a nice, uh, generous sort of, uh, hole in the blade that you can, you know, flick it open with. And mm -hmm. it just seems, um, it just seems more of a, of a unique release for them because it's different from the kind of 3.25 to three and a half inch D2 and G10 kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, it looks really cool. Okay. All right. So what's up uh, up next in uh, Knife Life news that you want to address? So next I want to talk about Amari Amare Knives. Uh, that's uh, Uli Henneke's, uh, Ulrich Henneke's uh, knife company. Now, he's a German designer who designed the um, Spyderco Uliza, which is, which is a really cool um, discontinued Spyderco. It's got this long, sinuous uh, recurved blade. Uh, the moment I saw it, uh, I don't know, several years back when it first came out, I thought, oh my God, I wish I designed that knife. That was my immediate, my immediate reaction because it looks like a small, it looks like a pocket Filipino sword to me. That's mm. just to me. Uh, but it, but it was out there in the police line. It kind of has the same, uh, dimensions, just a kind of a different shape and different plan form. Anyway, he created a company in Germany called Amari. And he's done all of the designing up until now. And now he has Tashi Barucha, the famed uh, uh, French knife maker, knife designer, mm -hmm. uh, designing a couple of knives for him, uh, for him for this line. One of them is a fixed blade knife uh, for outdoor bushcrafty stuff. And the other one is the one that's interesting that I'm bringing up right now. It's called the Folding Creator, which is an interesting name. And, and it's, it looks just like the baby machine. Which I always thought was a hilarious name, Baby yes. Machine. That's like, right. uh, uh, Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> right. But, um, uh, it's, it's a knife. Uh, so this, this new knife, the Folding Creator is a slip joint, but it's using a, a, a different spring setup than a usual slip joint. It's something that, uh, Henneke came up with himself and it's, it relies on a two prong st 
spring and both prongs are under different pressure so that when you pull it out, it's, it's easy to open the blade, but difficult or, or a lot harder to close the blade, uh, which, which is a good combination, I think, for a non-locking blade. But this folding creator, like I said, it's got the same sort of profile as the baby machine, but it's, it looks a lot more utilitarian and uh, something you might use. I think they're using it as a folding food prep knife. It's supposed to be a mm. tiny folding food prep knife, mm-hmm. which just as an aside, I've always thought was strange. People using their folding knives for food prep, like there is a whole world of kitchen knives out there with knives optimized for cutting food. Right. But that's another story. Yeah, I, I never think of reaching in my pocket for a knife when I'm in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. I, I reach to the chopping block or uh, uh, block holder for the knives, whatever you, whatever you call that thing. Exactly. Unless you're making a YouTube video and you want to talk about <laughs> well, yeah. how fantastic this folding <laughs> knife is for food prep. Uh, not, not that you know anything about that. No, no, no. Not at all. <laughs> anyway, so I think these Amari knives are cool. I, I Like I said, I love the, the um, Henneke designs, and I think he's got a fantastic eye, and I think bringing... Tashi Barucha into it is, is you know, kind of genius. I'd love to have that guy on, too, but I'm not right. sure if he speaks English. I'm sure right. he does. Well, I just remind uh, everyone listening that uh, if you want to see the links to these stories, you can go to thenifejunkie.com slash 63, thenifejunkie.com slash 63. We'll have links to uh, these show no- uh, to these stories and other uh, items that we talk about in the show notes. And if you want to keep current on some knife news in the industry, you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash news. That's where we aggregate a bunch of news from uh, just tons of different uh, places so that you can stay current on what's happening in the uh, knife world, the knifejunkie.com slash news. But uh, one final kind of funny or interesting story you wanted to kind of wrap up Knife Life News with, Bob? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so sometimes I scour the news for... Um just news stories that have knives involved. But this one came right to me in my mailbox. And anyway, this this is just kind of funny. Uh, this local person, local to where you and I are, Jim, is actually a woman, but she looks like Sean Penn on a terrible day. Oh, God. And <laughs> so I'm just going to read this brief little thing. A commotion at the Social Security Administration office escalated into something more bizarre when the sub- when the suspect was arrested on Tuesday. Around 1024, officers responded to the government office for a report of an assault on a security guard. Now, police say a woman was yelling at employees, prompting the security guard to approach. She responded by striking him in the head with a fanny pack. Mm. When the guard escorted her out of the building, the woman reportedly took out a knife and threatened him. A police officer located her nearby, took her into custody, and when they searched the fanny pack, the officers found a live pigeon inside. What? A pigeon. Officers took the pigeon to the animal shelter where the staff determined it was not injured. You know, pigeons are tough. They live in the city. The bird will be released into the wild once... Check this out. The bird will be released into the wild once the police investigation concludes. So that made me think they have this pigeon strapped to a chair. You know, where were you on the night of the 5th? Bright light in the eye. <laughs> So uh, this this woman, I won't mention her name, is not from where we are. She's from New York, surprise, surprise, faces an attempt, attempted unlawful wounding and uh, and a little bit of uh, animal protection problems there. So oh, there's so much going on in that story, Bob. I can't even I don't even know where to start. <laughs> well, she threatened the man with a knife and then yeah, she pulled out a pigeon. pigeon and, and yeah, and looks like Sean Penn on a bad day. Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, she's kind of handsome. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Don't even matter. respond to that. Jim, before we move on, I just want to mention that uh, the knife drop stories oftentimes come from Knife News. And mm-hmm. Knife News is a great outlet if you're interested in, in keeping up with how things are dropping. Ben Schwartz over there, he runs the show. And uh, I was in brief communication with him a few months back. And he just seems to be a great guy. And he has his finger on the pulse of the knife world. So definitely check out Knife News if you have a chance. Absolutely. And uh, that's one of the sources we uh, we pull from on the knifejunkie.com slash news. So you can find everything you need to know there. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. We want to move into and away from Knife Life News and into the Knife Junkies collection. But not going to talk specifically about what's in the collection but kind of the, I guess, natural progression, the natural evolution 
uh, of a knife collector. And you're going to talk about it firsthand from your experience. And, and hopefully our listeners that are listening to this can, can, you know, see some similarity with their collection and, uh, you know, love to hear from them as, as you kind of go through your evolution and, and get some perspective from, from our listeners as well. Yeah. Well, this first kind of popped into my head when we were doing Thursday Night Knives live. And I was talking with uh, Alex from Alex's Knife Box. And we were talking about how our collections are evolving. And I noted that his is going in a, in a, man, he's like a, he's like a, an art curator. His, his knives are getting more and more amazing as he works with more and more custom knife makers to create these unique, uh, amazing pieces. And I was thinking about how my knife, um, collection is evolving and, and, Maybe evolution is not the right term, but how it's, uh, how it's shifting. And I seem to be going back to my roots, Jim. Like the whole reason I was ever interested in especially folding knives that you can carry with you, I'm kind of into the weapony aspect of them or, or the tactical self defense martial arts aspect of them because that's just, you know, my area of interest. Mm -hmm. But being a subscriber to many, many, uh, a very influential and, um, uh, well, uh, very influential knife critics on YouTube. I have uh, ventured out into the world of jewelry knives. That's why I call them kind of like pocket jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, purple anodized knives on ball bearings with this and that. And uh, so I, I, I accumulated quite a number of those kind of knives and then recently have decided that I have to go back to my roots because I re rarely carry pocket jewelry knives. And when I do, mm -hmm. um, I kind of am looking forward to the next day when I'm carrying an Emerson again or a, or a hinderer or something a little more uh, tactical and high speed, low drag, as they <laughs> say. And that's not because I live that lifestyle. That's just simply my taste. Right. So that's that's where I'm headed. And 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 I, it occurred to me last night, actually, that. It's like I've gone through a long phase of promiscuity. You know what I mean? You maybe maybe you're in college, you've just left the house, you have freedom, and you want to explore all that you can explore. You know, variety is the spice of life. And then you can justify that by you know, justify it uh, in terms of the knife collecting by saying, well, well, I have such a wide and varied collection. You know, I have a sample of each kind of knife from many different makers with mm -hmm. many different materials and. And then you start to think like a curator in a museum, like I have a knife museum and I have to represent all uh, all sides of the knife art. And uh, I've had to realize and admit to myself, I am not a curator. And can't afford to be one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. More importantly, cannot afford to be one. No one's coming to my house to look at my collection unless I, hey, guy, hey, come on downstairs, right, let me right. show you something. So it's more important for me to, rather than have a representative of each kind of knife, it's just to have and own the best of what I actually carry and use. Right. And so I'm kind of whittling away and kind of heading back in that direction. And, uh, you know, I actually, this is uh, seeing pictures on Instagram of everyone that I admire in that, in the knife world at the New York City Custom Knife Show has kind of reminded me of that uh, because immediately you you get that sort of social media. I mean, social media was built for this. You look at people and you get jealous. Oh, my God, they're living their best life. Look at them. They're at the custom knife show in New York. And so I'm seeing these amazing photographs of these amazing knives uh, from the New York custom knife show. And I'm thinking, wow, I, now that's something I need to add to my collection. But then I say, slow down there, Bob. You right. know you would never carry that $800 knife. It looks beautiful, and it would probably be great to play with for 20 minutes, for me personally. All right. But you know that if you had it, it would sit in the box, locked up, and you would probably decide not to carry it on any given day. So these uh, New York Custom Knife Show photographs are kind of helping me kind of return to my magnetic north. I said it that way because it sounds like kind of a Hollywood term, but you know, it's, it's kind of helping me get back to that, to, to what I really enjoy about knives and, and realize that you can look at them and appreciate them just like uh, you can go to a museum and look and appreciate, look at and appreciate a Willem de Kooning painting, but you don't have to lay down 5.6 million bucks to have it in your own house. Mm -hmm. I can return to videos on YouTube. Oh, I, I feel like looking at that, uh, that particular knife. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll just look at a video and, and that right. will assuage any sort of desire to, to 
right. to sell off my life to pick it up, you know? Right. Well, as I'm beginning my knife junkie hood, if you will, <laughs> as a knife newbie, I think I would be the one that likes pocket jewelry or likes the look of the knife or whatever, but I don't have to carry it. So I would be the collector that would buy the nice knife, the pretty knife, the whatever, to have in the box or on the display cabinet or on the shelf, whatever, to be able to look at it without having to carry it. So that shows that there are differing styles of collector collecting for everybody. Yeah. So it just kind of depends on where you fit into the spectrum. But I think it's important as you are to realize what type of collector you are and then to go down that road. 100%. I agree with you. Off the top of my head, two channels on YouTube that I admire incredibly are uh, Cutlery Lover and Birdshot uh, IV. And these guys, uh, Birdshot, of course, is uh, Frankie and Bird. They're a married couple, and they are knife junkies, like, to the nth degree. They have huge collection. They seem to have a huge collection, from what I can tell from, from their YouTube videos. And obviously, they're not carrying all of these. And they probably don't carry most of them. And uh, also, same thing with cut Cutlery Lover. Jeff over there uh, in Pennsylvania, he's got an amazing collection, and I know... He keeps a number of them, um, you know, his slip joint collections in display cases. So he's, uh, has them up and he can see them and appreciate them. But mm -hmm. these are people who have sprawling collections. And it's unrealistic to think that you're even going to carry one of those knives even once in a year if you have that many. All right. But I admire that. And, and, uh, there's part of me that would really, you know, if, if, um, money were no issue, I would have collections like that too. And I'm not saying that money is no issue for them, but but that's how they prioritize. Well, you know, your your collecting will will continue to evolve, so no telling where you'll be in another five years, ten years. So yeah, you know, evolving now and continue to evolve. So yeah, all right. Hey, we want to remind everyone that our podcast, the Knife Junkie Podcast, is sponsored by QuickBooks. And QuickBooks just had a live conference where they announced several features that are now going to be available within QuickBooks. First is QuickBooks Live, which connects you to a team of virtual bookkeepers who you can trust to help get your books done right. Also, QuickBooks Connect feature with Cash Flow Planner, feature that uses AI to address the cash flow stress that affects many small business owners. It allows you as a small business owner to predict your daily cash flow 90 days in the future so that you can make plans like defraying, paying a bill, or maybe requesting invoices to be paid faster. And also a feature that was added is something called QuickBooks Payments, which lets you get paid faster. Uh, we all know in a small business, uh, the cash flow is important. It's uh, definitely important to get that money in your pocket. So QuickBooks launched this new feature to create a payment-enabled invoice in less than a minute. So with hours, expenses, mileage all added up by AI automatically, definitely all these features are going to help you as a small business owner get paid three times faster. If you want to learn more about these features, more about QuickBooks, and get a 30-day free trial of QuickBooks, we've got you hooked up. All you need to do is go to thenifejunkie.com slash QB30. That's the knifechunky.com slash QB30, where you can find out all those details and, like I said, get a 30-day free trial. And Bob, you mentioned the uh, Custom Knife Show. did want to mention that our friends over at uh, Knife Magazine have a, a great list of uh, knife shows and knife club meetings on their website at the knifemagazine.com slash events. And uh, you had mentioned the New York Custom Knife Show. That was just this past weekend. And I think as you've mentioned a couple of podcasts, that's uh, the one and only uh, knife show that you've been able to, to attend yeah. in the past. Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, I remember uh, going, well, I've, I've gone twice, and that was 15 years ago or so, uh, when it was still in New York City. It was at the Marriott Marquis, I think, right in Times Square. I think that's the hotel it was in. But <laughs> that was amazing. And actually, um, for some reason... The only maker that pops into my mind that I was just obsessed with and couldn't leave his table was Al Polkowski. And his knives, man, are so cool. He he had these, um, I'm not sure if Al Polkowski is still with us. I should have done a little research. But he made these amazing little hideaway fixed tactical blades. And uh, I remember him as being kind of a grumpy dude. But, but his <laughs> knives were so elegant and beautiful. And uh, 
hideable. And, you know, um, cust- uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool, I think, had a, a design by him at one point, a mm-hmm. production design. But anyway, it, what a, what an amazing show that is. Uh, just really, uh, and, and kind of, um, ironic being in New York, which, which has the most, uh, you know, right. right. The most, Byzantine knife laws, and actually, uh, it's now across the river in in another place that has horrible knife laws, New Jersey. It's in the it's in Jersey City now. Well, and you mentioned, you know, with the advent of social media and Instagram in particular, you can get some of the experience of being at the mm-hmm. show with with folks posting a lot of pictures. You definitely don't get anywhere near the experience or see everything, but at least you can get a a small taste of of what it's like to be at the show. Right. It's like it's like having a bunch of reporters out there, you know. Uh, reporting from the front. It's pretty cool. Going from social media to, I guess, old school marketing, if you will. Yeah. You know, it used to be the, what, Sears and Roebuck catalog, you know, would mm-hmm. come out and everybody looked forward to getting that catalog. And, you know, then everybody was getting into catalogs. And now it seems like, you know, the printed catalog is uh, definitely not as uh, perceived value as much or produced as much or printed mm-hmm. as much. Except for the holidays. I think yeah. everybody kind of blows it out during Christmas and the holidays, but, uh, you know, with Christmas catalogs. And I know that uh, several weeks ago, I think I mentioned to you off air, off one of the podcasts that we needed to talk about, because I saw Case Knives had their uh, Christmas oh, yeah. catalog out, you know, well before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. uh, several weeks mm-hmm. ago. And it's like, uh, you know, now is the time for Christmas catalogs. And you had one kind of interesting one that you wanted to kind of talk about a little bit. Yeah, well, I got the Bud K catalog. And uh, Bud K, you may or may not know Bud K, but it's kind of legendary. And uh, this was introduced to me first, probably in eighth grade, by my dear old friend Mike uh, in Ohio. And Hey, uh, Mike. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Actually, uh, Mike has this amazing bike shop in Ohio. It's all commuter bikes. Oh, Shout great. out to the Broadway Cyclery. Cool. Uh, but anyway, Mike was instrumental in my becoming a knife junkie. You know, it was hmm. started by my brother and grandfather. And then he, uh, he and I met in middle school and he had a knife collection. And, uh, he really, uh, <laughs> he really helped me get, uh, get into it. Anyway, he's now a bike junkie, which is probably healthier. I- I'm convinced it's healthier. Mm-hmm. But if uh, you ride them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right exactly. <laughs> They're a little more expensive to buy if you just collect. Right. But anyway, he introduced me to the Bud K catalog, and now I'm on a knife sucker list, which is awesome because I'm starting to get all these catalogs at the house. Uh, but the Bud K catalog came, and it is spectacular, and it it really brought back the inner child. You know, okay, so this is items, Bud K catalog is uh, items for the budget conscious hitman, miscreant, thug, mall ninja type, and uh, it's just filled with cheap weapons <laughs> I, right. I don't know how else to put it or you know and some knife deals they have th- things like this like six knives for 36 bucks it's like a package they have fantasy swords those are these uh swords that would never actually work in the real world but just look kind of cool you know with cross guards made of dragon wings and crazy double bladed blades and check this out jim you're gonna like this you can buy a lock pick set from bud k and learn how to pick locks. It even oh, comes yeah. with a fake credit card, you know, for those kind of locks that you can just slip a credit card in the door. What do you think of that? What everybody needs. <laughs> <laughs> so you got sword canes galore, which, you know, I'm a big fan of sword canes. I only have one, cold steel, but it's it's awesome. Uh, they have this. This is cool. Now, this is an idea I had years ago uh, when I lived in New York, and I used to walk around with an umbrella all the time when it was raining. An umbrella sword. An umbrella oh, okay. sword cane. Or well, it's, it, you get it. You, yeah. you, you pull a sword out of the shaft. Right. Right. But this one, the shaft looks like a big sword handle. It looks like a big samurai sword handle. So there, <laughs> it's not very discreet. You know, you, you think a, an umbrella sword or a cane sword should be something where people just think it's a cane or an umbrella. Right. Right. And then in the moment of truth, you pull out a sword and they're surprised. Well, this thing already looks like a sword with an umbrella on it. So it's it's kind of hilarious. A uh, swordbrella. Swordbrella. That's what we <laughs> should be calling it. I saw a blatant ripoff of the Rad Knives Field Cleaver, which is this beautiful knife made by Colin at Rad Knives, and it's a you know very expensive and custom made affair. And uh, Bud K found a found a total ripoff of it. You know, 
and you can get one for 12 bucks. How about that? Well, wow, amazing. A couple of other interesting things. Uh, you can buy Lucille from The Walking Dead. If you watch The Walking Dead, uh, Negan, the, the uh, s- mostly villainous character, walks around with a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, kind of like a, a World War One trench tool. You can buy that made from them, which to me, I'm like, if you're going to walk around, if you can have a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, you should probably make it yourself. Kind of seems like it would have more meaning. You, you could buy, this is, this is hilarious, a spiked hunting club. Okay. I mean, this thing looks like a medieval, uh, a medieval weapon. It's this, you know, it's a giant club that has a, a, co- a metal collar on it. And uh, radiating in four directions out of that are rows of spikes. And I think it's funny, you know, they put, they put hunting in the name as if, first of all, as if anyone goes out hunting with a spiked club. <laughs> you know, e- even cavemen didn't do that. They use spears and bows and arrows, right? Uh, so it's a spiked hunting club. But if you put hunting in the word, it, it immediately takes it from weapon all right, to right. recreational tool. Justifies it, yes. <laughs> exactly. Something that uh, they probably should use on uh, AEW wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then one, one last thing, uh, uh, this is funny. This reminded me of those uh, six packs you see wrapped up in stapled uh, paper bags at the grocery store uh, when, when they have leftovers. You know, people go to the grocery store, they open up the beer cabinet, and they take one or two of a six pack. And then they have all these leftovers. So they put them in a mystery bag, and you get a mystery bag of beer. And it's cheap, cheaper than if you were to buy a regular six pack of any one of those brands. You take it home, you open it up. Oh, look at this. I got a. XYZ to drink. Well, this is a mystery pocket knife set where you get 12 random pocket quote unquote knives that they mm. send you for 40 bucks. How do you like that? $40 for 12 knives. You think you can cut anything? You can probably stab something with those. But Do my math in my head. What is that? Uh, three, and, three and change, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, boy. Have I you hope ever my parents are so listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that reminds me, I think I, uh, a month or so ago, I emailed you one morning. I couldn't sleep, and I was up at like 4.30 or 5, and I was flipping through channels, and there were two infomercials by some, some knife company. I can't remember who it was. Kind of the same, similar thing. You know, get this pack of, you know, 185 knives for $99, <laughs> and, you know, it comes with six swords and six of these and whatever. And I was like, holy cow. Yeah. So yeah. same principle, I guess. You, too, could have right. 36 zombie green unusable knives. Like, what are you going to do with all those things? Start your collection now for just $179 <laughs> with free shipping. So anyway. That's right. That's right. Guess there's a market for everything. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else, Bob? Uh, we have covered a lot of ground here. Christmas is coming. Uh, perhaps we'll have a uh, knife junkie holiday gift giving knife guide or some knife guidance coming up sometime soon. Well, yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, we'll do a little knife buyer's guide of uh, knives coming out soon that I think are cool. Uh, you know, but that's not a comprehensive list. Yeah, yeah. Because no, yeah. you know me, I get finicky and I get silly with, with and, and and I start picking on people and uh, picking on knife companies and knives, but but it's going to be a realistic kind of knife buying guide. Uh, but one other thing I wanted to mention is that I have an incoming knife, and it's going to be a very special one. It's a well, I am so surprised that you have an incoming <laughs> knife. <laughs> well, it's from our friend Stu, Stu, the uh, law enforcement officer that we gave a shout out to a couple of weeks ago. Oh yeah, uh, Stu. Yeah, who mentioned uh, how he carries a a Ritter a Ritter Hogue and a, a serrated uh, Delica mm-hmm. um, Warncliffe. And uh, on the job, he uses them all the time. You know, he's in law enforcement and he cuts people out of seatbelts, this and that. Well, he is sending me out of the generosity of his heart. And I think this is amazing. Uh, I'm blown away by this. He's sending me a Delico Warncliffe, a serrated Delico Warncliffe for me to check out. Oh, cool. And uh, uh, to check out and keep. And, and um, you know, it's one of those cases where I'm like, please don't, please don't. Okay, if you must. <laughs> and And, man, I'm... I am not only very grateful, I, I don't have it in hand yet, but I am not only very grateful, but I'm really excited to check out this knife. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I have one Delica that was gifted to me by my daughter, uh, uh, and I love Delicas, and I've always been curious about the Warncliffe, and I love, I'm, I'm headed back towards serrations. I know it's a little out of vogue, but... Man, I am really excited to pick up, the, to get this knife in the mail. Mm-hmm. So, Stu, thanks a million. 
and uh, I'll be back to thank you once I have it in hand. Yeah, and we'll uh, have a uh, review of it on the uh, the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And if you are not subscribed to the uh, Knife Junkie uh, YouTube channel, be sure to do that. Go to theknifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe. You'll uh, be able to see all the new videos that the Knife Junkie drops. And uh, he mentioned, uh, you mentioned, Bob, the uh, Thursday Night Knives that we did a couple of weeks ago. We missed this past week due to an issue that I had, but... Uh, We'll uh, be getting back on those uh, more regularly, so if you'll go to thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe, not only will you get notified anytime the Knife Junkie has a new video, but you'll also, if you click that bell notification, get notified whenever the Knife Junkie goes live. And right now, it's for the Thursday Night Knives uh, live show, but uh, you never know when Bob will go live on YouTube, so uh, please, please be sure to subscribe. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Austin from uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny. We're going to have Terrell of uh, Todd Knife and Tool. That's Zelric42. And uh, and also Alex from Alex's Knife Box. Mm-hmm. These guys are awesome individuals. I really like them as people, but they're also wonderful knife. Uh, they have wonderful knife knowledge uh, from all different angles and just great guys to talk to. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. And uh, upcoming Thursday on Thursday Night Knives. Bob, we're uh, kind of... Wrap, wrapping up here on the Knife Junkie podcast, our supplemental episode, number 63. Final thought from you as we uh, we close the show out today. Well, even if you don't buy anything from these catalogs, I would recommend get your hands on a Bud K catalog. Get the Case catalog. Uh, get the, um, oh, what's the other one? Well, just get as many of these these paper catalogs as you can. I'm going to start saving them because I, I think they're going the way of the dodo. Well, and get on a mailing list, email mailing list of all your favorite knife makers and knife manufacturers so you can uh, keep up with the latest news and see what they've got going on and the new products they've got and those kind of things. So great, great sources of information. And speaking of that, the Knife Junkie has a uh, newsletter that comes out, you know, fairly regularly. Uh, we try to do it once a week, but, uh, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll keep you up to date with what's happening on the, the show and, and knife world and that kind of thing so uh, just go to the knifejunkie.com and you can subscribe not only for the newsletter but also if you're not subscribed yet for the podcast you can get all that at the knifejunkie.com slash subscribe so for bob the knife junkie demarco i'm jim the knife noob person I want to thank you for listening to episode 63 of the knife junkie podcast thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at review the For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.